Hey everybody, Dennis Wood here, and today I'm gonna to go over uh, probably a pile of reasons why you do not wanna mess with your factory axle. Uh, we're gonna go over a list of things that you will potentially have issues with uh, rebuilding an axle instead of buying a new one. Um, and before I even start this video, I will say, uh, in general, if you are rebuilding or uh, trying to reboot or anything, a factory axle, uh, you should stop watching this and go buy one if you can. Um, a refurb one or a good rebuilt one um, from an aftermarket. The only reason we're even talking about this is because this happens to be, the vehicle in question is a 2018 Leaf, and it is extremely hard to find, in fact, impossible to find aftermarket axles for this. And uh, it's kind of a dealer only part. So I have actually gone and replaced um, the passenger side of the right side uh, drive joint. So it's a 2018 Nissan Leaf with a factory uh, axle, which was the only option. And it was expensive um, in Canada here, running around $900. Um, just a boot for this. Uh, again, uh, there there is an aftermarket, uh, I think Beck Arnley sells a boot kit. Uh, probably 40, 50 bucks. I bought one from the dealer uh, and we'll talk about why, um, but it was not cheap. It, I think by the time I was out of there, again, Canadian funds, it was over $150, which is kind of nuts for a boot. Um, if you shop around uh, for this axle in Canada, you should be able to find it for about $600 uh, from a Canadian Nissan dealer. Um, so you might have to shop around a bit to find that price. If you go look, some of them are listing it at like eight or $900. So I would suggest that if you have to service an axle, do not buy a new one. But I'll show you why we got into rebuilding this one. So we're in a little tighter here and uh, we're just gonna go over why again, you probably don't wanna mess with your factory axle, for real. Um, so, reason number one. This is the shaft end as it comes out of the car. Um, so you're, you're basically your hub um, and your wheel is at this end. This normally is supposed to just pound off. So with a soft blow hammer, you strike here. Um, in some of them, you know, they're fairly specific about keeping the joint straight. Um, and it should just pop off. Why? Because it's, it's got a, a split pin on the end, much like we'll just pull this uh, tripod bearing off. Much like this end here, there is a ring uh, that I've taken off. Um, but this end has one of those rings, which is hiding at the end of this axle, and it's not coming off. So uh, the Nissan factory service manual basically says, look, if you can't get this off, um, by striking it with a soft blow uh, or brass. You have to be very careful not to deform any of this. You'll just wreck the joint. Um, if I was replacing the CV joint, if I could actually buy one, which I can't, you could also just break out this cage with a ball peen. There's a, plenty of YouTube videos on that. Um, but basically bust out the cage, which would let you remove the balls, remove this piece, and then um, remove this piece, which has that just a, a round uh, spring pin at the end or spring clip rather. So this isn't helping us much. Um, cannot get this off. Factory manual says, you know, don't, if you try, if you have to try too hard, then just uh, replace the whole assembly. So here we are back to buying a new assembly again. Uh, reason number two, uh, you probably don't want to do this is this. Um, if you have a staked nut and it was properly staked, there's a pretty good chance you or a shop is going to actually uh, wreck these threads right here. This, normally the nut would go on here and you'll basically deform the end of it so that the nut doesn't move so it's locked in place. It's really easy to mess up these threads. In fact, I had to clean these up very carefully. Um, so not an easy proposition uh, if you're having problems. If uh, you don't stake, uh, or, or sorry, if you don't properly remove the stake by, dry, by using a drift uh, into this channel, you will damage it. Um, not only will you probably damage the threads or the end of this, um, but when you try to put the new knot on, you'll, you may very well strip the threads. Um, and another thing is you really should use a new axle nut. Um, again, factory service says never reuse it, probably for that reason. If you do happen to have the kind that has a cotter pin and a castellated cap, it's an easier go because you're not in danger of wrecking these threads. But um, again, um, I can't get this off, so it doesn't really matter. Now, if you, if you happen to have a shaft like this, where the um, this end won't come off, well, the inboard side possibly can be removed. And normally what sits over here, this is a, it's a tripod type 
um, bearing. So these bearings, uh, actually there's little uh, needle bearings in this area here, inside this. And there's three of them. This is all in good shape. So this is now the inboard end of this joint. And this piece here is just gonna slide on. And I'm gonna show you um, a problem here because what keeps this piece on in many cars is a clip that runs out here and you basically compress it, pull it out. Uh, in this case, there is no clip. Instead, what the factory decided to do, probably to save the cost of machining a groove and a clip, is they just staked it. So they literally took a punch and they punched in the metal on all these spots. There's one, two, three, four, five, so six staked spots. So if we look carefully at this piece, uh, hopefully we have this in focus a little better now. There's, I've had to grind off a little bit of material, maybe going down an eighth of an inch in each of these spots in order to remove that tripod to get, because these rollers would not slide off. So if we, I'll just wrestle this off, and give you a different view. So this tripod assembly would normally slide right in like so. And it's these stake spots that basically keep it from pulling apart. Um, so if you have an axle like this and you have happened to take it apart, guess what? Now you're grinding to take it apart. So there's probably reason three or four not to mess with your factory axle. But wait, there's more. I'll just put these down. I've obviously cleaned these up. And by the way, you're gonna have to budget uh, perhaps a mortgage payment of paper towel to clean this all up. And if you have a parts washer, that's great too. You can see I've cleaned these parts already. Um, I should mention too, um, I have, uh, you can see here, I've made marks here and here and also corresponding marks on this housing uh, so that when you uh, slide everything back together, you've got it keyed in the correct position, which is with an older joints probably important because things have kind of worn together. Um, I'm not sure if they balance these in the factory, um, but either way, if it is balanced, you wanna make sure that, uh... so yeah, these parts are, I've staked them together. Uh, I put a stake mark here and here. Obviously be careful not to do that on any surface that's gonna be worn. I put a little mark on this piece as well so that I can get everything keyed and assembled in the correct uh, orientation. So again, if you forget or you mess up, um, you could have an issue. Should also mention maybe reason number six, this surface here is not the same as this surface here. Uh, this is normally just slid on. And then there is a circlip, which I happen to have here it sits at the end of the shaft right here. It clips on. It's, this is not a round spring clip. It's actually a circlip that keeps this piece on. And you have to make sure you get the correct surface here. This is the bearing surface for it. The factory manual will tell you to put the bevel towards the inside of the, uh, or towards this side of the joint. So um, yeah, another thing to consider. Let's go on to the boots themselves and whether or not you want to uh, reboot the uh, axle. So one of the issues you may have is this inboard side, which is in the uh, trans or the transaxle of the car, maybe actually be stuck. In which case, you'll see, you know, you can take a pry bar and try to pry back on that. Um, normally, these just come out with a good tug. Um, so this piece, which has a round pin, just like this one, uh, there's a pin on here. Uh, you're not supposed to reuse these. Uh, I, I do have a new ring for this, but this little ring basically is round and it sits in a corresponding groove inside the transaxle. So basically, if you kind of put a little bit of grease, try to get that centered. Uh, this one, in fact, does pop back into the transaxle, which is great. Um, there's a new pin. Again, factory manual says always replace uh, that little guy. Um, so there's that. Um, if you do have issues removing this uh, drive axle, let's say it's stuck. And again, um, the driver's side and the passenger side are different because there's an intermediate bearing. It's a it's an extra bearing on the shaft here that sits in a housing. Um, so a, a slide hammer like this is a really handy tool to have. Uh, it basically has like a fork. I can put a link to this particular one. It wasn't terribly expensive. It has a nut there that secures the fork and it basically has a weight and it slides back. Um, so it allows you to fit that while it's on the car and then give it a good whack back. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to give a nice square. Again, if I had this configured correctly, it gives, it allows you to um, put a nice, uh, 
symmetrical force on this. Um, but again, on this particular car, it just pulled right out just by giving it a tug by hand. So let's lay that aside and let's look at the boots. Okay, so let's just talk about boots and clamps uh, because you'll see various boots out there, uh, various clamp designs, and uh, even the factory ones can be quite different. So what I have here are the new and the old boots. And the reason why, uh, the whole reason why this shaft came apart, by the way, is because of this little boot here and um, where it was fitting on the axle shaft. So this would kind of be sitting right here on the shaft. It's bearing on this surface. What happened here is there was some corrosion probably, uh, or that's exactly what happened. And this became loose. And because this piece is designed to keep out water and dirt, the boot, to protect this joint. And you can see um, in one of my other videos, I took the joint completely apart on the uh, passenger side and kind of uh, analyzed why it failed. But what happened basically on that side, keep in mind it was a $900 tag, is the, you know, this little clamp, which is probably worth about two cents, was loose. And what it was doing is allowing water to go down the drive shaft, enter. And because we have salt in the winters, it rusted the joint. Um, and the joint failed. So a car with 100,000 kilometers with a boot that's in good shape, failed on the on the uh, passenger side or the right side on the left side again it was loose but fortunately the joint was still uh, it's not making any noise when i turn corners and it seems to uh not have a uh, a lot of free play but if you look at this joint look at this shaft you can see there has been um some water here because you can see the corrosion it's cleaned up on this side which did not this is the inboard side which is far more protected you won't see that corrosion so um, again, I'm going to repack and, and uh, reboot this, um, but really this joint is, it's in okay shape, but honestly, if I knew all this, I would have just bought the factory joint. I would have coughed up the 600 bucks and done it. Why? Because this is the second time I've had it out of the car. Why? Because when I rebooted it, or sorry, when I uh, took this boot apart, cleaned this joint and reclamped it, I actually... Uh, probably put the clamp on a bit too tight. And again, it's an old boot. Factory manual says don't reuse the boot. Um, I'll probably zoom in on that, but you can see there is a rip right here. And when I went to put some camber bolts in the car, it was supposed to go in for an alignment after I did all the work, there was grease coming out. So I had to pull this joint out a second time. Another reason um, why you may not want to mess with your factory joint, uh, your factory axle assembly, because if you go back and start messing with it, a little problem like this could very well lead to the failure of the joint anyway. In a perfect world, I would have uh, replaced this joint, but again, they're not available. You can only buy the whole axle. And I keep saying it's probably worth it just to buy the whole axle because of all the issues I mentioned. Here's another one. So these factory clamps, um, if you have a close look at the design, um, they're kind of preset for a given uh, tightness. And there's a reason for that. Uh, why? Because if you over tighten, if you look at this, this boot is actually fairly plasticky feeling. Um, and it's not very thick at these edges. So if you over tighten it, and there's a good possibility that I did because I wasn't using a factory clamp, you'll probably rip it. There's not a lot of material here. If you look at the inboard joint, okay, the one that goes against the transaxle, there's actually a lot more rubber here. It's way thicker uh, at both sides. So you could probably get away with you know, using one of these. This is one of these universal clamps. If you compare this to a factory clamp, uh, you will see that there's a difference in the width. This one's probably, uh, I want to say this one's probably seven or eight millimeters. It's probably closer to like 11 millimeters and it precisely fits the boot. Less of a chance you're going to have a problem with this one. So again, another reason why you might not want to mess with your axle um, at all is that you may not have the tools. There's different tools. This one requires a, basically uh, a set of needle nose or some some pin set of pliers that I do not currently have. Um, I'll probably just use needle nose to clamp these ones down. These ones do use a crimp type um, arrangement. The factory ones actually specify, in, in this case, this piece, this the design of this clamp ba basically means, and I will come up closer here. Okay, so this clamp basically has a very defined clamping um, pressure. It's defined by basically when this edge gets to this little dog here. Um, with a universal like this, you basically are controlling it by how much you're crimping. And you're also kind of uh, picking whatever set of slots happen to fit your joint. Um, so there's a good chance, A, because it's too uh, narrow 
And because you can't really control the clamping force, you may over clamp it. In the case of this particular, again, this is one of the factory clamps um, that comes with the joint. The outboard joint, and by the way, they're different. Uh, so the joints, the clamps that come with the inboard are not the same. This is the set that comes with the outboard. They're both crimp type and the factory actually specifies the height, um, how basically tall this thing should be when it's crimped to seven millimeters. So basically very precisely defines how tight this thing can be. Why? Because if you over tighten it, you're probably going to rip the boot. Um, and this particular clamp is a factory clamp, but it comes from the inboard and you can see it's different again. This is doesn't, it's not crimp at all. This is the one that uses those uh, uh, needle nose pliers there. So clamps and messing with clamps. You may not have the tools. And quite frankly, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, it's highly possible you're gonna over crank them and rip the boot anyway, even a new boot. So let's go on to yet another reason why you may wanna just go with a factory or a, a fully rebuilt axle assembly. So let's talk about grease. There are different greases uh, specified depending on whether you, you've got a CV joint like this or a tripod unit like this. Um, this unit just has large, basically stainless uh, balls and uh, a race. This one actually has needle bearings. So there is um, different grease. Now, this happens to be GKN uh, is the manufacturer. And I did manage to dig up what they recommend. And again, some people will say don't use a molly grease on these tripod joints, but the uh, GKN specifically um, recommends, if you do some searching, this uh, liquid molly, it's long life grease. It has uh, basically molly in it, uh, which again, if you look at some internet uh, posts or some research, you'll see that some manufacturers do not recommend any kind of molly in there. But if it's coming from the manufacturer and they say that this is okay, then I'm good with that. Um, very often, the joints will come with grease and uh, generally what you'll find is the grease here is going to be a different consistency it might be a little runnier than the grease here this is the grease from nissan um, and again it looks pretty similar to the molly grease it's just a black probably a high molly grease it's got added um, ad there's additives in there basically for a long life of lubrication because obviously you don't regrease this thing unless you're doing what i'm doing so uh, yet another reason to uh, not try and rebuild one of these joints. So I think we've kind of covered over lots of reasons. Oh, by the way, when I put this back, this particular tripod joint, guess what? I'm gonna have to restake this. So I'm gonna have to put this back together and restake these points here so that uh, this won't pull out. It shouldn't be a big issue because in practice, those stakes are not removing or are not uh, holding this inside this assembly when you're driving, it's actually you know, when you turn a corner, this piece here is sliding back and forth in this housing. And there's quite a bit of room here. So it never actually comes close to the end. If it is, you've got big problems, like you've blown out a ball joint or something. So um, in this case, I'm not too worried if I, you know, if not, I'd be able to stake it. But had I known this, that this these were staked only, would I have taken this apart? Absolutely not. Um, on some cars, like the older Volkswagens that I worked on, um, this doesn't even, um, this joint itself doesn't even pull out. It's actually bolted in. Uh, to the transfer case via flange. So it's a little more complicated. They've gone to this because it's simpler. You don't have a flange, um, bearings, seals. In this case, it's just uh, this straight into the transmission or the transaxle. And uh, there's one seal and bearing there. So um, probably a little less complicated assembly. You see a lot of this now in the modern cars and they uh, probably realize that you didn't have to actually have the thing bolted in. All right, so there are a couple other items that you really need to think about if you're rebuilding uh, one of these drive shafts and specifically um, this boot length and the amount of grease that go in uh, play into how um, reliable this thing's going to be. And one of the issues with this joint in particular, this tripod joint, is that it does move, uh, it does have about three, or, well, again, it's a solid three inches of movement and it has to do that in order to allow the shaft to accommodate for turns and uh, big suspension changes where uh, this shaft may change length slightly. Uh, same thing when you're going around a corner. Um, so we talked about clamps. I have this shaft now clamped up to my satisfaction. So I wanted to just touch on two more uh, really important things regarding um, rebooting a joint. Some things that a lot of people don't think about 
Um, and I have, I've noticed that quite a few of the videos out there uh, on rebuilding a joint don't talk about this. Um, the installed length of this boot is actually quite important. If you if you put this farther up on the shaft or farther back, you are probably going to have an issue with a premature failure. The other thing is that the joint, uh, the factory manual describes a process where you basically burp the joint. So the factory manual actually calls, it tells you what the installed length of the joints are. And I've got my handy dandy uh, micrometer here set to uh, what the spec is. It's 94.7. So it's 93.8 on the tripod side. That's a value that's coming from a factory manual. 93.8. That's the installed length of this boot. And you can see, again, it has to be straight, but we're pretty much bang on there. And one of the most, or one of the really important things that you have to think about is at this installed length, you want to basically burp the joint. So you either put a screwdriver in here and lift this lip or just flex the, if you can, flex the joint. Why? Because as you push in or pull out, you're going to put a vacuum or you're going to put pressure on this thing that should not be there. So basically what the factory manual is saying is install the boot, set it, uh, you know, move this in or out until the distance you see here is uh, in this case 93.8 and then burp the joint. And once you burp it, basically you're taking excess vacuum or pressure out of the... Uh, uh, out of the joint, which is going to help uh, prevent premature failure. Another thing that can cause issues is if you put too much grease, obviously too little or too much grease. So the factory manual does have a spec um, and it's not the same on these sides. So if you're buying sort of a generic boot kit that comes with a packet of grease, it might be worth kind of measuring it out. Uh, for example, on this side, uh, the tripod joint, which is a, has a more volume in here, Factory manual calls for 131 grams of grease. And GKN, which is the manufacturer of this boot and the shaft, um, they do recommend or um, allow you, I guess, to use this uh, Liqui Moly uh, Long Life Grease. It's MO, it's got Moly in it. Um, and again, you'll see some people saying, well, you shouldn't use Moly in this joint. If GKN says it's okay, then I'm okay. Bottom line, uh, 131 grams. This is a 90 gram tube. So you're talking about uh, one and a half of these uh, to get to um, to get to this uh, required grease. So you're not just filling this and filling, you know, filling the boot. You want to put 131 in here. On this side, the factory manual again calls for 115 grams. So it'll be a full 90 gram tube plus, you know, about uh, uh, what are we talking? another uh, 20, 20%. So you're talking about 20%. Um, it might even be worth measuring it out if you're really concerned. Um, we did talk about clamp and clamping pressure. This is my new, the clamp that I used um, to crimp these joints that require crimping. There's one here. This is a factory clamp, factory clamp, factory clamp. This one, because I think the clearances are really a lot tighter here at, on the inboard side, this, these clamps are different. This, by the way, is one of the uh, generic... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a generic stainless clamp for, multi, for multiple different lengths. But this particular clamp, I tried... I actually wrecked one. In fact, I wrecked the larger one trying to use something like this on it. What all I had to do was take these needle nose pliers and basically there's a couple little tabs... Or not tabs, but they're kind of like grip points. And you pretty much just grab on with the... Um, needle nose pushing down and squeeze hard and this joint will basically uh, or this clamp will basically lock itself together. This was uh, one of these generic stainless clamps. You can see it's not quite as wide. Didn't have a choice though. Um, and I was very careful not to over clamp this. The other thing I did here to prevent the tail of the clamp from twisting is I just used some tape. Uh, this is like aluminum duct tape just to uh, hold that tail um, because this joint over here got cut uh, after I used a clamp like this and the tail basically kind of wandered into uh, the clamp, uh, sorry, the tail wandered into the boot and ended up cutting it, which is exactly what happened with this boot here. And it's got a big, basically there's a tear uh, that was probably caused by incorrect clamping. So that was my bad. So there you go. Um, more reasons, I don't know, that you may want to think twice before you touch a factory or try to rebuild a factory axle. Uh, the grease volume, it's good to know what that should be. Also, 
good to know what the installed length of these should be and make sure you burp the joint. So let excess air in or, or excess air out by just, um, you take a screwdriver basically and gently insert it here and lift and uh, let any air out again at that installed length. So there you go, a couple more things to think about. When I edit down the video, just talking about some of the issues that you'll have with rebuilding an axle, you probably could have replaced two on the car. So if you've watched this long, um, maybe I'll save you a few hours. Um, hopefully you find this helpful. Um, I for sure, I've been you know rebuilding cars for probably, I don't know, 40 years now. And um, I will tell you that, you know, if you listen to old salts and I'm not a mechanic, I just have a hoist and I work on a lot of cars. Um, they'll tell you, just go get a reman uh, or a factory joint. Um, some of the other cars, like this happens to be an EV, the joints are all the same, the drive joints and that sort of thing are generally very similar. In fact, this boot um, for Nissan is used on Sentras and Ultimas and that sort of thing. So it's not like it's a EV specific issue. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would just go and find, uh, if you can, a good reman or a factory joint. For the Chevy Bolt, this joint is from the factory, or sorry, from the dealer is two, 250 bucks. Um, you know, if you're getting charged labor as we are here in Canada at a hundred, uh, at a dealer, you're going to be paying a hundred, 150 an hour. Um, you can already see, uh, why buying a $200 or $250 joint would make sense. In the case of a car where you cannot find a reman or, um, aftermarket, um, joints, then you're kind of left with dealing with this stuff. Um, if you have an older car or in this case, it's a newer car. Uh, the aftermarket just hasn't kind of caught up. There hasn't been a great demand. But I will tell you, if you do have a car like this and uh, you do happen to have a loose joint, which you you know you can tell by just checking this on the car and seeing if it slides back and forth, um, if there's any movement at all, th this joint will fail at some point due to water and sand. So uh, me, you know, if I'd seen that earlier, if I had actually caught onto, it's not something you normally check when you're doing service on a car. Uh, you know, we could have tightened up that clamp and maybe sorted it out. So there you go. 10, a dozen reasons why you may not want to mess with your factory axle and all the sort of things that could happen uh, after the fact if you haven't kind of been aware of all these issues. I hope the video helps. If you're able to like and subscribe to the channel, that would help me with more content down the road. Hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.